Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Josette Bushelmingo, and I shall be spending the next 40 minutes with you. And I'm speaking English. I think I'm what you call the in-hop. There was someone else who was supposed to be here today. I've got a few questions for you. I'm very grateful to be invited. I was very grateful to be able to accept and to think that I might have something to contribute to this discussion or not. So here are my questions. I speak as an African descent person, a British person who works mostly in C and cons, but I want to ask you, why won't you tell my stories in your museums? Why will you not include my history in yours? Why do you continually forget me? Why do you become confused or upset when I challenge your version of events? Why when you do portray me in no matter which area, I'm always slightly exotic. Why am I still arriving from a heart of darkness? Why is it still naive? And why must I constantly be grateful? Do we accept that it is your version of events. Why do some of you, not all of you, why do some of you still ignore the social and political changes that are sweeping this country? Why do you not act upon them? Of course, there's so much that you are getting right that is so brilliant and so long and sick, and so strategic. There's so many Yelmstelshiet, or Yernes, some amazing statistics. But something isn't quite working. And I think you know that. I think you feel it in this room that your institution your organization might have to do something else. Are you preserving your own version of events? Are you a mirror of the past or a platform from which the future can be seen or both? Whose past are you showing and on whose terms? Questions, questions, questions. What happens if we miss out all of those people? What's going to happen to your institution? What's going to happen to your job? What's going to happen to your boss? What is going to happen if you start to forget people? What will happen to the museums and the theatres and the films? What's going to happen? We will be abandoned. People will go elsewhere for what they need. You can only look in a mirror for so long before you only see yourself. And if you look in a mirror for at least five minutes, you can test it when you go back to the hotel. The rest of the world will start to disappear and you will fall into your version of yourself. I do visit museums a lot. I don't often give presentations. Like I said, I'm the in hop. But I have done performances. I've worked with the amazing National Museum, with Rikstiotens Tustiotta, working with Odyssean, looking at pictures that were influenced by the Greeks. I've worked with Techniska Museet, 
Skarkig Advent 2 in Sino 4, which is a three-dimensional performance about four people who wanted to escape interpreters and taxis and being translated. And those four characters were Dove, Dove Blin, Blin, Tekken Sprotling. I've also worked at the Ethnographist Museum. They're having the privilege to look and talk with Ben Okri, the Literature Prize winner on the exhibition of Ife, Modern Musiyet, Cinema Africa, having some tall and interviewing artists from all over the world. But the question remains, for me it still remains, where are the permanent exhibitions of Africans and Afro-Swedish people in your museums that continue to contribute to Sweden's history and culture? From Sweden's part in the slave trade, all the way to Sweden's role in South Africa. From Henrik Larsson to Barbara Hendrick. Where is that permanent exhibition? Where is it? I must say, I was quite optimistic, and I wasn't going to say that. I scratched it out, but I'm going to say it now. I was quite optimistic when I came to Sweden. I believe it is a country of change, on the edge of seeing itself, that is a country full of potential, with a massive capacity to change things, to see its possibilities. But for the first time, I'm afraid. For the first time in years, I'm afraid that when things do change in this country, and they will change, diversity isn't something that you plan, it is coming, they're fins, they're air saw. When the movement of the right wing sweeps Europe and in Sweden and in the Nordic regions, and that is part of Montfal, that is part of diversity, when it comes, because it is coming, we may not be ready. We may not be ready, it's not completely hopeless, but we may not be ready. It's not just museums, it's films and the theatres as well. But also prepare to make a stand. At the moment, I sit on Stockholm's Kontinelli Herg Skolands Liedermot, Svenska Film Institute's Liedermot, Ja Utförande for Cinema Africa, and I am also Utförande for Tryck, which is a new organization that celebrates and lifts up the power and talent of African descent artists and Afro-Swedish artists in the Swedish Cine Konst. But the same questions are coming back again and again. How can we find a new audience? Who can we make our theater museum? How can we make our houses more till the end here? How can we make it for everybody but without picking anybody out? We don't want to point anyone out. We don't want to point anyone out and I don't understand why. I don't understand how you can be till the end here unless you know who you're talking about. Okay, here's a test question for you. How many African people of African descent are standing on the stage at this moment? Come on. Who? Me. See me. How do you know who to include in your museums, in your institutions, if you're not able to speak about it? If you're not able to talk about it? If you're not able to mention it, how is it going to work? We talk about for Allah, the inter for Allah. There are some who have and some who don't. But there are different reasons about why maybe we don't include people. And I've come back across this again and again and time and time. History. History. What does Sweden know about its own history? Really? What were you taught at your university? Or your school? Or your college? What were you taught about your own racial background? Ras biologia? The Slav slotted that you still have? 
and that Sweden was part of. The already know and already sleeping I detect when I mention the Somme situation. What are you taught? If you are not taught it, if it is not spoken about, how can you convince others? How can you have those arguments? How? We possibly have generations of people coming out of universities, out of theatre schools, out of film schools, possibly not coming into these discussions at all. I was recently at one of the theatre high schools speaking to the master's programme of students writing. They were about to graduate, this was a year ago, and they were about to graduate from the master's ah, playwriting. And I asked them, had they studied any artists, any writers from any of the other countries outside of Sweden, outside of the Nordic regions? And they said, no, they hadn't. So I'm not quite sure what they were going to write about later on. How is that going to work? One of the things is history. What do you really know about your history? The second is fear. I smell it in the room already. A very special perfume being afraid. I'm afraid to do something or say something wrong. I'm afraid to make mistakes. I'm afraid to challenge the status quo. I'm afraid to challenge my boss. Instead, I defend every citizen with a kind of blind democracy. Everyone is the same. It's better to say that than to say that everybody is different. It's the difference I am interested in. Then, of course, there's cultural worth. The fact that other people's cultures and values are not necessarily worth anything. That we can't find any goodness in them, whether it's through their gods, through their dance, through their writers, through the literature, we can't find them. They're not of value to us. Class. Class is such an invisible thing. I thought everyone was posh when I first came to Sweden. I thought, wow. Got wood on the floors, double glazing in the glass, church separated from the state. Wow. It's an invisible perfume in Sweden of class that you inherit things for free because of who your mother was or who your father was, where you studied. Class plays a huge part in the idea of mongfowl and making a choice. Power. Very powerful position to sit in. To decide Sweden's history. To decide what your nation will see. To decide exactly who they are going to be. To decide where they came from and to decide where they are going to go. It's extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful for me to stand here. I am in charge of what I say. I can make decisions. Anybody who says it's not a powerful position is lying. Great one. Then, of course, there are the words that we use. The words we use to intimidate and exclude people. A structural power basis as a way to exclude. A couple of words I can give you for today. Nigger is not a good word. Even though you see a lot of black people go, hey, nigger, what's going on? Nigger is not a good word. Everybody knows where nigger comes from? What? I'll ask you once more. Does everyone know where the word nigger comes from? Well, it has come from nigger. It's a slave word. It was given to the people that I'm descended from. It was a negative. Negro, negress, mulatto. Mulatto is not very good either. Mulatto, I believe, is the breeding of a horse and a donkey together. Not very good. And I'm also not colored. I'm not a rainbow. Green, <laughs> orange. No, nah, I'm not colored. And there are two words. You have svarta, from a political old, from USR. And then you have brown. I'm brown, not all over, but mostly brown. Hmm? 
something else that's very important for me, and this is a very Swedish thing, I think. I put here, see it. It was something I asked you before. How many African descent people are standing on the stage? And there's complete silence, the horror of it. The horror. How dare you ask that question? How dare you ask me to tell you what color you are? Because if you don't see it, and you don't name it, and you don't get over it, and you don't get on with it, this country will not survive the next years. Part of the challenge that you have is your fear of saying she's black. And it's okay. If you do not name your history, if you do not face it, if you do not take it out of the cupboard, it will creep up on you. A particular party, which has now got about 10% in the vote, is winning a particular argument because they have all the facts underneath them. They're not tipping toe around it. They're saying directly, you in to took on day, the dit fear do come it midland or tar botsa. You will in to how do have, do tar mit job. Did they? The mass statistic or fact, alt core. I spoke Swedish. And what do we have? We have goodwill. We have invisibleness. We have, you can't even say that I'm black. That's not going to be good enough when the time comes. Because the time will come. See it and name it. And then get over that feeling of abandonment. Get over that feeling of embarrassment. Get over that feeling. And then get on with it. The people are there. The ideas are there. The reference groups are there. They are there. They are there. They have always been there. See that your institution may be portraying a monoculture. Sweden's culture and language is amazing. Divac nothing to be stolen for. But in order to understand the extraordinary journey that Sweden has done, it makes no difference at all if you do not compare it with your history. Yes, which is that you were a country that invented race biology, which then turned out to be the groundwork under which the Jewish star was invented, which then became, once you got rid of it, the ground for Auschwitz. Now, the difference with that is that you face it and you see it so that you can really take joy and pride in what you have achieved today. But if you do not have that in comparison, who vet it? Who vet it? See how far you have come from what? See that your museum is maybe not giving a full picture of Sweden's future culture. See that your organization may not be recognizing other languages, and I'm not talking Swahili. North or South Sami. A lot of you know that I work at Riksteatern's Tustteater. One of our biggest Umeå. Where is the Tolk Museum? Where are they? Soon Tolk, where are they? Or did you just think that nobody else would be interested in what you have to say? Where are they? Think. There's a reason that that's up there. I didn't have anything deeper to put on it. It's you. For do ha idin. You keep talking about everybody. It's not about everybody. It never has been about everybody. It's been about seeing actively who is not there. That's what it's about. Finally, as I said, on my list of see it, class, the words you use, history and fear, all those things you can research yourself. Finally, is, as I said, is you. 
do? What do you privately and personally think about all of those people that you have to include? I keep asking myself that question. Really, what do you think? What do you think about some teckenspråk? Some funktionsnedsättning? De andra landet och andra språk. What do you really think about them privately at home? Snack i korridoren. Drunken parties. What do you really think about other people? Really. It's okay. That's your heart of darkness, really, in the end, I think. To deeply understand, actually, on my own, Maybe I don't like them. Slightly uncomfortable. It's okay. Men är det sant? Det är inte så farligt. Det är inte så negativt. But if you do not face these things, it's always going to be uncomfortable. We know as we've said before, that all these other factors are influencing, and you also know as well that there are many more factors that influence the choices that you will make, whether you work in archive or museums, whether you work in film or blah, 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 blah. But one of the things, and this is a word that I kind of thought about, I was speaking and doing a bit of research, and someone sort of came up with a phrase which is artistic terrorism. Artistic terrorism. What might that be? For God's sake. And discussing it more, the idea is that we secretly sabotage any attempt to discuss or create new work because of our own lack of education. We're going all the way back now. History, what do I know? I don't know something, so I become afraid. I become afraid, so I say the wrong words. I don't say any words at all, so I start to say something else completely different. And then I haven't dealt privately with what I think about it. You've, in Sweden at the moment, you've got part of Sweden waking up going, I'm a minority, and I've been sitting here for years accepting this shit, and I'm not taking it anymore. And then you've got the other half of Sweden going, oh shit, what have we done Who's have we done What have we done Simultan. It's happening. Only a little bit to go now. Do you have that? Artistic terrorism is the idea that because of our own lack of education, it doesn't mean the education was bad, but it is and was missing something. It means that we quietly erase all traces of Sweden's diverse history. It means by mistake or by accident, we rewrite or remanage other people's history. We don't include because we might offend. You think that if I ask someone, I'm going to look stupid. It's okay to ask. It's okay to ask. It's okay to ask. It's okay to ask. You don't have to know everything. In the end of the day, you probably have the biggest responsibility of all. And it's actually one I didn't think about too much until I met Anki. Where are you, Anki? Hello, sweetie. She's hiding down there. Oh, God, why did I book her? Oh, God. She's so sad. Oh, she's all going wrong. Huh? I don't care. Grr. I hadn't thought about it, actually. And I'm coming to an end now, literally. But I realized that the museums, the houses that archive, and in fact all our social institutions, but let's focus specifically on the museums, and I'd never ever thought of it, was that you have a huge responsibility. You know this already. And that you sit today possibly at some kind of crossroads you are not just a place of archive and preservation. And if you are, who are you archiving and preserving for? Who? As someone said to me, 
before I came up and I called them on the phone and asked them about what to do on Musiyet. They said, it's not about who's going to tell my story when I'm dead, but who will tell my story when I'm alive. How will people judge me? And will the museums help people to change their minds? Where can I go as an African descent person in any museum in Sweden and walk into an exhibition today that will change the way you think about me? I'm not saying it doesn't exist. It is a genuine question. I know about Ife. I know about Monkultulel Centrum and Ross. But where is it? Where can I show my children or your children or your children? You see, no matter what the Nazis are saying, I'm not like that. This is who I am. This is who I was. Where? Where will I go when they throw stones in my face? Where can I show them I am not a dream or a pack of lies? Where can I show them I, am not, I was not always a beggar on the street? Where can I show them I am more than just a housewife? What house can I go to to show people that my history and my culture, that my truth is universal to love, to die, to dream and remember? Where can I go to show that even if it's not the same as yours, it is still worth something? Where can I go in any museum or archive house today and show that actually I've been here for a while? I didn't start in Tintini, Congo, and I didn't suddenly appear in Mon Cultural Oret because January to December I'm black, and then after that I suddenly, boom, and I'm not anymore. Artistic terrorism removes and delays, it reconstructs and it erases our humanity and our greatness. The museum houses, archives, should be places of refuge, of shelter. They should be places of debate and of course challenge, knowledge and inspiration. It should be one of the most potentially democratic rooms where every individual reaction is worth something. That's why today, this is the only word I needed. Do. The breadth of that, the older women from Turnadal, Krakum Yankee, the young people from Rothkaboy, the punks from Soleft, or the Sami from Umi, the children from Sundsvall, the deaf football team in Erdebru, the white men supporting Zinkan's damn football. That is Mongfal. And you need to see it. I can't give you it. Nobody can. And you've flown me a long way. Finally, The consequences of maybe not doing this, of using that deeper GPS, asking yourself those profound questions of organization and institution, is that people will stop coming and we'll be out of a job. And the reasons that drove us to study for so long that keep us in the same jobs will mean nothing. All that archive will disappear into dust because people will do it for themselves and they will go elsewhere to do it. They will look for alliances in other places. They will look for us digitally. It's easy to focus on the children, but it's the adults in this world I believe need the most support and education. If we do not see it, we will believe we do not exist and we will pass that on to the next generation. When the change comes, my friends, because Sher Torp will not go away, when it comes, because it will come, 
I assume the museum doors will be open and ready. Patsy and Smith Valley. Jag behåller här. Ska se om jag har några djur. Drömmer inte. Nej, nej, nej. Så här. You ready? I dare you. I dare you. Because if you can't do this, you can't meet anyone there. Look at that. You see? Eftersom jag ser att vi, vi har lite tid så det, det tänker jag, vill jag inte yes. släppa Stoppa. bort dig. Um, du har ju en brittisk bakgrund. Yes. Um, och uh, jag blir lite nyfiken på när det handlar om engelska museer och också amerikanska så framhåller man ju just deras... Um, att de är väldigt duktiga på interaktivitet, dialog, medskapande och så vidare. Mm. Vad, är, är det så? Är det, är det stor skillnad? No, no, no. I mean, the questions that are being asked in the museums, for example, in the United Kingdom, we have something called the Slave uh, Slavery Museet. Uh, some of you may know of that. That's in the Docklands. So there, for example, you've got Truth and Reconciliation. But the same challenges that would happen here with the museums of being interactive, of inviting the community are the same. The difference is, is that we've had to ask those questions earlier. It's very easy, I'm sorry, to hop, jump back to England. Viviet, mm. the thing is, I'm interested in what's happening here in Sweden. I'm interested in the talent here, but the questions would be the same. It would be the same, the same challenges, the same idea of how you get people to interact. They are the same. Is there a big difference? Yes, we have a colonial past in the United Kingdom, which is from India, China, Africa, and beyond. That means we have been forced to ask questions. Um, some of you may already know about, um, for example, a young boy called Stephen Lawrence in the United Kingdom uh, who was murdered at a bus stop. His parents then uh, took the police to court. The police were then found out to have covered up the murder of this young boy. They took it to the European court. The European court said, This is an absolute abuse of a human right. Then they commissioned someone called uh, the McPherson, uh, Sir McPherson, and he issued the McPherson Report, which basically went into every national institution, and out of that came the word institutionalized racism. Now, these are one of the things we have underneath us already. When we are talking about whether it's the museums, whether it's the theatre, whether it's the everyday work in the United Kingdom, it doesn't mean it's easier for us. Jag tänkte på någon en sak när du pratade och mm. det var det här med att, att du är medveten själv om att eh, don't worry, det, det, det är lite läskigt och det är lite jobbigt och sådär. Och jag tänkte också på att, att, att jag själv satt och tyckte att det blev så här, oh, eh, och eh, Varför är det läskigt? Nej, men det är det som är så intressant. Tänker jag. Oh. Att, eh, om man tar in det på museerna, att man oh. vågar ha att det blir lite, för det blir lite läskigt. Mm. Och vad, är, vad, är, vad tänker du om det? Eh, för du ber ju ändå om ursäkt för att du... Mm. Och, så, och så tänker jag också att om du hade pratat på exakt samma sätt, fast om ett annat land, mm. Danmark, USA, då hade det slutat vara läskigt. Mm. Men det är just när vi pratar om oss själva. Hur tänker du att vi kan komma vidare att våga möta det här läskiga mm. men ändå kunna prata om det också mm. när det är i Sverige? Um, well, two things, or three things actually. Um, I speak in a very particular way, which can sometimes be a little bit scary. <laughs> But it's because I take this shit seriously. I'm not, I'm not here to mess around. I'm not. So that's the first thing. So it can be a little bit. But also as well, I think one of the first ways that all of you can start to deal with this is to see it and name it. You don't have to talk as loud as I do. I've got a microphone. <laughs> But actually, it's talk about it. In small groups in your own room is to face it. It's to be able to say, because one of the situations that I was recently involved in to support was where the whole art department of an institution would not support one of their workers who had seen a form of discrimination. They had heard it and wanted to do something about it. And I came in just to offer advice, although I was not finally involved. And this is another reason where people are very nervous. I mean, how does each 
or our department in each institution deal with this? Do you really feel supported? And I think that's one of the areas that people have to get over. But for me, I think each institution can find that room, that place. It starts with the box at the top. It starts with you. The nod. Oh, yes. <laughs> it starts, as was said before, with a mandate. But a room is created where people can say, can I say that word? This is why it might be difficult and then for someone to explain and when I say someone, those people are out there who jobbar jag med teckenspråk. www.sdr.se, Sveriges Dövas Riksförbund. Har du frågat? Du vet mer om afrikant, det afrosvenskarna, eller www.tryck.org. Grupp finns. Men du måste fråga, and that's why I go back to the I and the you. Because in terms of the first step, which is to talk, there's another thing that people have to face, is themselves. And that's scary. That's why that particular part about, you know, what do you really think, is maybe the most important of all. Du går ju mycket på museer och sådär. Skulle du säga att, att de är tillräckligt läskiga? Eller är de för safe idag? Both. It depends on which museum it is, really. It depends on what museum is doing what and how they're thinking. We've had an award given out today to one of the museums that I know very well myself. Extraordinary work. It really depends on where they are and what they're thinking. Are they scary? Are they not scary? I mean, I think as other people have said today, the idea that you are having these days is in itself an extraordinary step forward. Extraordinary step forward. Um, the museums... <laughs> I mean, when I went to the National Museum for the first time, you know, I was like... <gasps> I mean, this is it. This is the real stuff. This is the, oh my God, and there's the pictures up on the wall and everything. You know, you have to kind of get over a kind of class thing, maybe, a uh, språk, but also as well how to be able to, from the earliest age, show children that this is also yours. And so there's a big circle of education to come. That's why I also talk about the education. What did we learn? Where did we learn it from? How the circle eventually connects. We haven't learned it from an early age because we haven't been taught it ourselves. It's going to be very difficult for us to give it to the next and the next. Museums are extraordinary buildings. They're not scary at all. The questions that people are asking is how is the museum going to live into the next hundred years? And that's a hard question and a little scary. <laughs> so talk, prata, say those words that are uncomfortable, create those rooms. You can talk with each other. Prata och tecken och fråga. In whatever.